That tart is so good, okay? What's good, y'all? My name is Jessamyn Stanley. Welcome back to my channel. I'm about to make an eggnog pie and I'm gonna make a brown butter persimmon tart. I've already made the tart before. The tart is lit. The tart is one of the best things I've ever made in my entire life. It's from a recipe that I got that I found on Pinterest that is adapted from a Nancy Silverton Naomi Pomeroy recipe. It is so good. It's so good. There's this giant persimmon tree in my backyard. I've been harvesting persimmons from it all season. I've done it in a few different context I've made persimmon cookies, persimmon bread, persimmon pie, persimmon tart. So I'm going to make this persimmon tart again. It's so it's life changing. Also going to make a gingerbread, no, an eggnog pie with a gingerbread crust. Now tonight, after work, six o'clock, I might just make the pie doughs tonight and roll them out tomorrow. So I'm gonna get my ingredients together. If you have been on my channel before, then you know that I'm usually doing a yoga flow. I think the cooking is yoga. It's literally just a meditation. It's just another way to meditate. I'm gonna start cooking, cooking, cooking. <laughs> I'm so excited because the last time that I made this, the dough did not start coming together at this stage because there wasn't enough egg yolk in it. But this time, there's plenty egg yolk in it. It is coming together. So I'm gonna turn this out and just knead it a little bit. And then I'm going to put it in plastic wrap and then I'll put it in the fridge and just let it chill for I'll let it chill overnight, and then tomorrow I'll roll it out and bake it off. Oh yeah, I'm so pleased, for real. This did not come together like this the last time. It just looks so good. I feel like the key with pie dough always is to not overwork it. I feel like mainly what I'm doing is just pressing it into place. Using the moisture from the butter and the egg yolk and the cream and just pushing it into place. Every time that I made pie dough and it tasted good, what it looked like before was like kind of ratchet Play-Doh. When you can see the butter chunks, that means it's gonna taste good. Okay, the last time that I did this, I actually, I think it doesn't matter. The last time I did this, you know what, I'm gonna do it the way that I did it last time. The last time I did it, I just put the dough onto the saran wrap, which I just thought was like messier than it needed to be. But at the same time, I think that what I was about to do is like unnecessarily complex. Do this, boom, 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 boom. Cutie. I love how quickly and easily this came together. Like I've been saving all of my baking for the weekend because I feel like that's when I can give it the most attention. It's 6.49, it's not too, too late. I'm about to get this dough into the fridge, which feels pretty good to me for a work night. It really is extremely relaxing to do this also. I feel like part of why I really like baking is because of my Virgo placement. <laughs> I am a Virgo rising and I'm just really hard on myself mentally, especially in my work life. And it's like really important to me to do a good job and get the right answer. And baking is an area where it's like, you can just get the right answer. More so I think than other types of cooking. Baking requires precision in a way that is really gratifying. Boom. Put this in the fridge. We will see this bad boy tomorrow. This is enough. Okay, now I'm going to just clear up, get cleaned up, and make the gingerbread crust. All right, I'm gonna start this gingerbread crust by doing something slightly unorthodox. I didn't soften my butter ahead of time. What I'm gonna do is soften it on the fly. The technique that I'm going to use to do that, this is five tablespoons of butter, is a... Uh, well, I think it's probably better to just do it than talk about it. This is kind of awesome after work. I've kind of mutilated this wrapper. Hell yeah, soft butter. Now I'm going to sift all of my dry ingredients together. Quick 
Quick pro tip for spices. I really love to buy my spices when I can in bulk. It's way cheaper than buying them in the little containers. It's not that way for everything, but in general, I think it's a lot cheaper to buy spices bulk than to buy them. It depends on how much you wanna buy. It depends on where you're buying them from. It depends on what spices you're buying, but in general, it can be cheaper than buying like these full size container. Trader Joe's is really good for like inexpensive spices. I ended up having to buy this McCormick's Allspice from Safeway because they were out of bulk Allspice at Sprouts. But I love to buy spices at like Sprouts or Whole Foods or some other organic co-op grocery store type place. So that was just ginger that I put in. Now I'm putting in some cinnamon. Cinnamon. When I was a kid, I, I was in community with someone whose name was Cinnamon. She said that people would always be like, oh, is your name? My name is Cinnamon. And she'd be like, no bitch, my name is Cinnamon. <laughs> like the spice, you're doing a lot, friend. All spice, I was very, I'm very cheap. So I was really like in my feelings about needing to buy this full size thing of all spice. I was like, is all spice? I feel like I read somewhere that all spice was like a combination of spices. So I was like, is all spice, like what can you, what what might I already have that I could put together in all, and make all spice? I was like, no. Allspice is a spice. And then I was like, well, like how imperative is it to actually have it in this? And I was like, bitch, if you don't get this allspice <laughs> and just calm down about it, you're doing a, you're doing a lot <laughs> on the topic of doing a lot. Ginger, cinnamon, allspice. It smells really good in here, just to be clear. Now I'm going to do a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg. And close. Baking soda, baking soda and baking powder. Not the same thing. Have I learned that the hard way? Probably. Did I block it out? I think so. That is all of my dry ingredients. Stay soup. I'm gonna start by creaming this butter. I wanna cream the butter, but first I want to crack my egg just so that it's ready. I really like to just have all my shit together before I really get into doing something really messy. One of the things I learned in culinary school was mise en place. Just like, mise en place is French for get your shit together. <laughs> that's not what it means. You can look up what it actually means, but that's the general sentiment. Get all your stuff, have it ready. What I was doing with the dry ingredients, that's mise en place. Egg, butter, brown sugar, and glasses. Now, have all my shit together. Mise en place. Get your shit together. Now, it is time to cream the butter. Maybe <laughs> Santa will bring me a KitchenAid stand mixer. Molasses seems to be like the key ingredient to gingerbread. These dry ingredients. Okay. I just love seeing this. I just love seeing it come together. It's very validating. Very like, cause I feel like a lot of times in my work, it's hard to see, it's hard to have like validation. <laughs> Cause we work on really long projects and then by the time you finish a project, it's on to the next one. It's, I'm only just now starting to consider like celebrating a win when it happens. It just can be hard to feel like it's ever done. But when baking, there's always, it's done at a certain point. It's nice to see it come together and be like, yes, okay, I did a thing. It smells so good. Okay. So this is like pretty white, all things considered. And I feel like gingerbread is usually less white, <laughs> but I don't wanna over mix the dough because if you over mix it, it gets to be really tough. So it's better to kind of under mix it. I'm just gonna get it together into a ball. Here we go. Yeah. I feel like it's not a big deal that it's a little bit floury right now. Stick her in the fridge. Back to you tomorrow. I'm so pleased with this. Oh my God. I made two pie doughs. It's 7.40, I started at like six. Now I'm gonna make dinner, get these dishes cleaned up, take a shower, take my ass to bed, and I will be back tomorrow night after work to get into phase two. So tomorrow I'm gonna need to make the filling for this eggnog pie. I will also need to go outside and pick some persimmons for the persimmon pie. It may or may not fully form both pies. We'll just have to see. After work, I don't have therapy tomorrow night, so we'll see. But gingerbread crust. Ready for phase two. Okay, bye.
Hey, it's so good to be back here with you. Today is a great day. I'm going to roll out both of the pie crusts today. Got my pie dish ready for my first pie. I'm going to do the eggnog pie first. So we're gonna do the gingerbread crust first. As well as champagne because today I hit 70,000 subscribers on YouTube. So thank you so much for joining me on this journey of life and thank you so much for subscribing and being a part of this. And we popped a bottle today and now have this Jean Sarah Cristiano here. Cheers to you. Thank you. <sighs> you are winning at the video game of life. That actually, that's really literally all it is. It's like if you're still alive, that means you're winning. You're doing a great job. Uh, okay, let me see what time it is. 6.49. Last night I was able to get up out the kitchen. I was in bed around 10.30, 11. So I'd like to do that again tonight. So let me go ahead and just hop into it. This is our gingerbread crust. Yesterday I was saying that it looks floury still because it still is a little bit floury, but I'm gonna unwrap it and just see what's going on with this. It's already an interesting experience. <laughs> it's just, I'm just gonna go with it. I wish it every day. Shit's coming together. It was looking real dicey there for a moment, but here we are. My girl is coming together. She's a little bit dry. It's just like she's ashy. What, what would we moisturize you with? In a future recipe, how would we moisturize you earlier? Because maybe you don't need to be moisturized. It's very likely that you will go into the oven, don't need to be moisturized. You will come out nice and tender and delicious. In the event that you do need extra moisture, I think like a little bit more butter, a little bit more, maybe it's like another tablespoon of butter, maybe another tablespoon of butter, maybe another egg yolk. I think there's only one egg in this. I feel like an egg yolk and some more butter do it. Okay, let's just see what's going on here. Yeah, I think we're ready to, we're ready to roll. And just shape it in the pan. My thing right now is I'm just pressing this gingerbread <laughs> into the pie pan. I wanna get it even so there's not just like big chunks, like big humps of gingerbread. And so it's just one big honk and hunk of gingerbread. I think this is looking pretty good though, honestly. I wanna get it even and then I'm gonna get a fork and pierce it, which will help it when I par bake it to not lift off the bottom of the pan. And they didn't say to use pie weights. I'm assuming because this is gingerbread as opposed to like a traditional pie crust, which is what the other pie crust is. The other pie crust is a pate sucre. The molasses, I'm assuming that the molasses in this gingerbread makes it pretty heavy so that it doesn't require as much weight being in the pan when it parbakes. But with the other pie crust, I'm gonna put pie weights in it when I parbake it so that it doesn't bubble up. I think, this looks pretty good. I think it looks pretty good. What I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna get me a knife, a pair of knife, and I'm gonna cut off these edges. And then I'm gonna get me my fork and I'm gonna pierce the bottom real nice. And then I'm gonna take all of the cut off edges and roll it together into one dough ball. I'm gonna roll it out and I'm gonna cut shapes out of it and cook it like cookie dough. All right, so before I actually bake this pie crust off, I'm going to just stick it in the freezer for a little bit so that it can just give the butter a little bit of time to chill before I put it in the oven. Basically, it's like you're baking the butter so that it low key stays intact and doesn't melt. So like anytime you're eating pie dough, it's kind of like the butter didn't change form ultimately. Freezing helps with that as opposed to like melting butter. I don't know if that made sense, but whatever, that's what I had to do. So this is going in the freezer for like 15 minutes. All right, so what I had to do in the in-between time was put some pizza rolls in the air fryer because I'm hungry. Now we got that out of the way. I'm going to mash up the rest of this dough, roll it out. I'm gonna cut out shapes with cookie cutters, and then I'm gonna put those shapes, cookies, onto the top of the pie. It's a deeply satisfying activity. Pizza rolls are popping off. Was it necessary to bring the whole air fryer basket over here? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. 
It's time to put the pie crust in the oven. I think that I might actually, I'm really tired. I had therapy today, I worked a full day. I might just bake off this stuff and clean up because I'm just really tired. Obviously I don't feel like getting into a whole other pie crust tonight. I feel like that could happen tomorrow. That is what I'm gonna do. It just looks real cute. If the crust seems set and slightly golden. It seems set and slightly golden. It smells really good. Let's carry you away. Now you are gonna have my Stouffer's mac and cheese that I'm gonna eat for dinner. I'm gonna get the cookies out now. Cuties. I'm gonna put them on a cooling rack and then I will taste one. It's tasty. After these have cooled down a little bit, I'm gonna put them into some, some something to chill, to just be cool until I'm ready to top them on top of the pie. But they're cuties. It's very much like um, like a little shortbread. A little crunch, a little tender, tasty cute. Cute is totally a flavor. Something can taste cute. These taste cute. So I'm gonna say goodnight for now. All right, so the first step for this eggnog pie filling is to take some unflavored gelatin and let it dissolve in cold water. And then I'm gonna put hot water on top of it to break that up. And then I'm gonna have the gelatin ready to go into the rest of the filling mixture. The tart shell is out of the oven, and I just chopped up all the persimmon. And I'm gonna go pluck another one off the tree. But before I do that, I just wanna see if I actually have enough persimmon where I'm at right now, because I might have enough already. So the idea with this is that you put all the persimmon just down on the bottom. Yeah, I think this is plenty. You just stick it on the bottom, let me record on the bottom. On the bottom. And so this is the part that is negotiable. Like, you don't have to use persimmon. You can use berries. It can be just whatever is seasonal. But the cookbook that this recipe comes from uses apricots, I believe. But what I'm gonna do now is brown the butter so that I can then make the rest of the brown butter filling. Then I can put it on top of this and then we'll be ready to bake. I'm gonna take her off the heat and just let it chill for a moment over here before it goes in here. And I'm gonna put some of this vanilla brown butter batter. Get the eggs and the sugar and the flour together. I'm trying to get the shell in here. One and a quarter cup of sugar. Fold in a half a cup of flour and a quarter teaspoon of kosher salt. Looking good. The trick with this, they said, is to not overfill it because it is going to rise when it bakes. And right, I have some ramekins here. Let's go use the ramekins this time. Oh, yay! Oh my god. 
So this shell, it's like hard. <sighs> I'm feeling so proud and grateful. I'm feeling really proud and happy. Yeah, I'ma let this chill. <laughs> I have been thinking about eating this persimmon tart the whole drive home, I was thinking about it. So I'm gonna make some whipped cream, serve myself a slice of this pie. Very tender. Has a nice bite. <sighs> totally worth it. I'm just looking at this persimmon tree right now. Yesterday I ate the brown butter persimmon tart. It was delicious. That tart is so fucking good, okay? Probably have some more today. Um, definitely had three slices yesterday. <laughs> but what I'm about to do is get into the final stages of the eggnog pie. The person who made it comes from this blog called Pies and Tacos. She tops the eggnog pie with some cut out cookies from the gingerbread crust that we made and sugared cranberries. I'm gonna take these cranberries and some sugar, sugar syrup on the stove. I'm gonna put the cranberries into the sugar syrup, let them just steep in that for a little while. I'm gonna take all the cranberries and roll them in extra sugar and then we'll have sugar cranberries. Oh my goodness. Simple. Gingerbread crust. Eggnog gelatin filling. That's tasty. <laughs> it's a deeply Christmas pie. Thank you so much for joining me on this pie journey. Like this video, subscribe to my channel. Mm. Join my yoga studio, The Underbelly, here on YouTube. You can go over to my about page and hit the join button. You can become a member of The Underbelly. <laughs>